Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to this presentation about Address CM. I hope everybody's enjoying this summit and all the presentations that are happening. I know there's some amazing speakers out there, uh, and there will be many more to come. This summit, I think, is above all about the results that we've made and uh, made this year. And I wanted to take this opportunity to go over the achievements of Address CM. Uh, but first, for those that don't know me, uh, my name is Alex Alpelorn. I've been in the blockchain space for about four years, uh, and I've been working at IOHK for a little over a year. Uh, I'm recording this uh, from London, but I'm originally Dutch. Uh, some of you might have met me during the Stakepool Operator Focus Group, uh, where we discussed the learnings of the ITM. Um, I also believe that this is my first recording as the product manager of Adrestia. So what is Adrestia? What are we talking about? Um, so we recognize that the Cardano node is, is a highly modular and highly custom uh, bit of software uh, that is ever changing and updating its integration points. Um, the node is built for robustness and durability. And for this reason, it can sometimes be hard to integrate with. So Adrestia started a revolt. Um, Adrestia is named after the goddess of revolt. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a more accessible and more standard way of integrating into Cardano. Um, but we didn't want to stop there. Um, we also wanted to get the opportunity for Cardano to integrate with the rest of the world. This is the reason why um, we labeled this as Adrestia, the gateway to the world. Um, so how does that look like? Basically, what we found is that um, there's there's a separation of concerns here. So there's the uh, performance and security that the node offers. It's it's highly secure. It's intended for decentralization, and it's extremely performant. Uh, that doesn't make it easy, though. So this is what Adrestia is for. Adrestia is the side of Cardano that will make it um, more usable, more reliable, uh, and easy maintainable, uh, easy extendable as well. Uh, the reason why we wanted to do this is to get our partners that want to integrate with um, with Cardano an easy integration path um, in order to maintain and adopt um, the Cardano chain. A few examples um, of these partners are obviously uh, Daedalus, but also other um, third-party wallets. Um, a lot of exchanges are using uh, Adrestia as well. Um, and the Explorer is using is using Adrestia. So what what falls under the scope of Adrestia? What what do we mean by you know making it easier third-party integrations? So um, we have a we have a bit of a wider wider overview of, of what is what is part of um, part of Adrestia. So um, First off, we we recognize the, the wallet backend. So the wallet backend is intended for individual use uh, of managing your funds, creating transactions, making delegation certificates, and joining stake pools. Um, the wallet the wallet backend is highly modular, and we'll talk about um, those modules in a second. Um, but most uh, um, sort of UX wallets can use the wallet backend and, and adopt this in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, there's some additional use cases that don't necessarily require you to interact with, um, with, with the Cardano chain. It only requires you to, to draw information from the, from the Cardano chain. So the, um, uh, the Explorer is a great example of this. It only reads information. It doesn't write information. Uh, so for this, we, we've created the, um, the Cardano GraphQL and we have the Cardano REST API or um, the Cardano Explorer API. So what we do with this is we, we allow a, an easy and programmable way of, of reading information from, from the Cardano chain. Um, it has some additional upsides like, for instance, um, drawing information for doing offline uh, transaction building. So you can select the, the coins that you want to use for transaction, serialize that transaction, and then and then submit it through the Cardano uh, Submit API. Uh, the Submit API is a, is a special feature that we, we added to our uh, 
to a list of capabilities and um, a lot of a lot of people that might want to manage their funds offline uh, use such endpoints in order to 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 publish their transactions. All right. Um, so how does that roughly look like? So what we what we see is is that uh, we have two direct uh, integration points with the um, with the Cardano node and by extension the Cardano network. Um, so we recognize the DB sync, which puts it into a, uh, which puts um, Cardano chain data into a Postgres database, uh, on which the REST and the GraphQL uh, API are are connected. Um, there's also the more tightly coupled and and, and interconnected uh, Cardano wallet, um, which um, which obviously, as I explained, is is uh, is there for managing your funds. Um, we see. Roughly subdivided that the Cardano wallet is obviously useful for wallet apps, but there's also uh, quite a number of exchanges that are using the Cardano wallet in order to manage uh, their funds and their transactions. Um, we also see some overlap there where exchanges are, you know, using not only the wallet, but also the REST and the, the, rest and the GraphQL um, uh, API or, or a combination of these things. Um, we do think we, we do believe that uh, uh, quite a number of the explorers that are, are out there um, are made by you know various members of our community uh, are using either the REST API or the GraphQL API. Um, we we do think that um, we need to give a bit more context as to what we mean by by the wallet because. There's a lot of features and functionalities in the wallet um, that make it such a great, uh, such a great product. Uh, let me see. I believe. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. No. So, 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 what do we do? What do we do with the wallet? So, what we actually do with the wallet is um, uh, this thing which we call address manipulation. So, um, the wallet allows you to create a mnemonic derive a private key from that and then associate it with that a, a public key. So it's basically, you know, creating, creating um, an address. This is not as easy um, uh, as you, as you might imagine. Um, and there's, there's a lot of security um, uh, assaults around this. Um, so yeah, like the, 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 the the, the address manipulation is, is a very core part of the functionalities of, of the Cardano wallet. And, and this is a thing that can happen offline as well as online. Um, the, the coin selection is, is something that needs to happen um, online because basically you need to be uh, connected. You need to be following the chain in order to uh, know which coins are associated with your wallet and which ones you can select in order to, to build a transaction. So there's the transaction creation. So the transaction creation can happen offline, um, where you can sign, like where you can serialize and then sign a transaction um, uh, with your with your private key. So what we see a lot in case of exchanges and in case of uh, of, of some more secure wallets is that the the transaction signing actually happens online. Oh, sorry, offline, um, and then the signed transaction blob is then uh, being published over over the chain. So the way that we encode um, our addresses and the way that we encode um, uh, our transactions is is, is um, actually not our transactions uh, is is back thirty two. So back thirty two has a number of interesting features. Um, going from you know statistical error recognition to making it a more readable format, uh, and there's even some research going on to have uh, specific prefixes uh, on on your addresses. Um, this is something that's still in the roadmap and will follow somewhere this year, uh, which will allow you to create um, personal and, and, and you know like uh, recognizable addresses. Um, this would massively increase uh, the usability and the readability um, of addresses on chain. Um, so yeah, like that, that this is going to be a feature that we're going to release uh, somewhere this year. And um, we're very curious to hear what you guys think of this. 
Um, obviously, the the um, the GraphQL and the REST API form their own um, uh, their own repos. So all of these are are in separate repos and can be used uh, separately. Um, and and you know you can you can build and play around with um, with the, the GraphQL and the REST API. All right. So um, what we basically find is is that uh, in order to improve improve usability. Um, uh, we think that a Docker image, um, is, is, is one thing that, that would make, uh, make everybody's lives easier. So we, we've created a, um, a Docker, Docker hub, uh, hub account where all these repos can be, can be downloaded and, and, and played around with in, in your Docker instances. Um, I myself am a, I'm a Windows user. So, um, I, I use Docker quite frequently in order to interact. Uh, with my wallet and, and do sort of the, the, the coin selection and the transaction submission. So what's coming next? Um, I think everybody's very curious about uh, what's going to happen this year, but um, we also have a very extended roadmap um, uh, reaching into into the following years. So what's going, what, what, what's happening this year? So I think that um, we need to recognize that, that Adrestia um, is always going to be a, a pivotal point within um, uh, within within Cardano. Um, we know that uh, Adrestia is going to make uh, Gogan script interaction possible. It's going to make multi currency uh, possible, uh, but it will also allow you to to vote and um, you know to, to just make it easier to uh, to interact with the chain. Um, you know, like. Gogan is, is Gogan and Voltaire are speeding along way faster than we we could have potentially imagined, um, and uh, the the Adressia team is is supporting the the Gogan and the Voltaire team in order to make this uh, uh, in order to make this possible. Um, I think specifically specifically multi currency is going to be is going to be an extremely interesting feature. Um, I think that the way that we're we're handling this is is significantly better than any of our competitors are doing this. Uh, but yeah, I mean, watch this space; it's going to be it's going to be super interesting. Um, another thing that we that we're planning on doing, um, we we reach out to some community members, um, specifically our ambassadors, and we basically ask the question. Um, you know, like what, what languages would you want to see the Adressia libraries in? So we know that Haskell is not always the most accessible uh, language uh, in the world. And, and we know that people have different language preferences um, uh, that they might want to use. So there is a clear desire to have a lot of the um, Adressia libraries in JavaScript. Um, we're currently researching that possibility, uh, but we don't want to stop there. Uh, JavaScript is is one example of um, of many languages that have a wide adoption uh, in the market, and, and we want to make it possible uh, for people to 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 interact with our libraries. So we can very much foresee um, Java, Python. Um, Rust, who knows? Um, um, we're researching it. We're, we're trying to make it possible, and um, yeah, we know, we hope to we hope to have at least uh, one alternative language um, by the end of this year. Um, there's also a couple of things on the roadmap that that you know, we we consider we think we think we know we, we, we what we want to do there. Um, so CIPs um, they're actually very much in progress. Uh, the Adressia team is working very hard in order to standardize uh, uh, interaction between between numbers of wallets. Um, and CIPs are are the excellent sort of mecha mechanism in order to make that possible. So uh, a great example of this is multi currency. Um, so although multi-currency will be possible or is already possible through the node CLI, um, there is uh, a sort of an interaction between uh, Daedalus and Euroi and other wallets that are out there in the space that need to have a standard format in order to talk about um, serializing, uh, serializing transactions and the way that they're built. So the Adressia team, in, in collaboration with Emergo, are are working on on uh, that specific CIP, uh, but we're also working on other CIPs 
um, in order to to standardize and to to support the wider community there. Um, I know Project X is kind of lame. It, I'm sorry for that. Uh, there are some projects in the pipeline that I'm really, really excited about. Um, I'm really excited to see, see these come to fruition. Uh, we can't discuss them just yet. Uh, I believe there is a, there's an announcement on, on these topics um, uh, later this year. Um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's half information. I'm really sorry about that, but that's, that's unfortunately, uh, the way that it is. Um, but yeah, uh, please, please keep an eye out in this space. Uh, have a look at the, um, address the repos and the user guides and, and make sure that, you know, you see, uh, the small changes and the additions that we're making. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be really epic. So yeah. Um, thanks for looking at this presentation and hearing me out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm quite responsive on Telegram. Uh, if, uh, if you prefer email, that's, that's fine with me as well. Um, I'm accessible in any way, shape or form. Um, uh, one of the, one of the biggest things is that, uh, that obviously as a product manager, I, I do. I uh, want to have uh, as much input and feedback and, and features and ideas as you can possibly throw at me. Uh, it's your voice that matters the most to me. And, you know, as a, as a uh, tool or as a, as a product group that uh, wants to make integration uh, as easy as possible, um, we do need to listen to, to the voice of, of, uh, of our users. Um, so yeah, please, please reach out to me. And I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. Thanks. Mm -hmm.